up. His name was Brian Jones. He lived fast and died young as one of the founders of the Rolling Stones. His death was ruled an accident, but now some say it was murder. The story on Entertainment Tonight for Thursday, September 6, 1990. Everybody, I'm Mary Hart. And I'm John Tesh. Since the 60s, they've been known as the greatest rock and roll band in the world, the fabled Rolling Stones. The late Brian Jones was one of the founders of this band, and his lifestyle spelled out the credo, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Well, the legend follows him even in death. There are those who now believe he was murdered. The death of a Rolling Stone is our inside story for today. The Rolling Stones have survived it all. Drugs, divorces, and superstar-sized ego battles. Now a book by A.E. Hotchner called Blown Away not only looks at their music, but at a mystery buried deep in the band's past. The unexplained death of Brian Jones. On all scores, it was obviously um, not the way it was pictured in the inquest. The official ruling was death by drowning, but Hotchner says he thinks it was murder. Brian Jones was one of the founders of the Rolling Stones in 1963, but by 1969, his friends say he couldn't handle the success. He'd been busted for drugs and was wrecked so often on drugs and alcohol, he could barely perform. So Mick Jagger and Keith Richards decided to kick him out of the band. So don't play with me, cause you're playing with fire. He retreated to his country home outside London. On the night of July 3rd, 1969, a small party, seven or eight people, was going on. After drinking and taking drugs, Brian went for a swim. Frank Thurgood was supervising renovation of the house, and he was there. It wasn't just the drowning side of it. It was the drink and the drug together. He was too good a swimmer to, to have died in a small pool. But shortly after his death, another story started to surface. Brian's longtime friend, Richard Hatchwell, heard that someone had drowned Brian on purpose. I was led to believe that uh, somebody actually stood on him and made sure he didn't get up. According to A.E. Hotchner, that someone was a construction worker, maybe more than one. A man referred to as Marty, whose identity Hotchner protects, told the author he saw it all. Quote, Brian tried to get out of the pool, and they wouldn't let him. They kept pushing him back and pulling him under, and then it started to get rough. They resented him because he was uh, rich and famous and foppish, and their girlfriends all, ooh, nod over the stone. They began to tease Brian in the pool and force him under, and under more and more, and they went too far. I think they drowned Brian. Please allow me to introduce myself. A few days later, the Rolling Stones played a memorial concert for Brian at London's Hyde Park. But while this was going on, police were conducting what Hotchner now says was a slipshod investigation. Retired police inspector Bob Marshall was in charge of that probe, and he stands by what he found. Everything that could be done was done. Everyone that could have been seen was seen. And there was nothing at all to suggest that his death was other than accidental. And Frank Thurgood is blasting the book as well. He says he was quoted even though Hotchner never even talked to him. As I say, it's to be expected that somebody who gave a statement to the police under oath is going to deny that anything else happened. But uh, you, can't you can't wipe away the events that occurred that people saw. Regardless of how he died, A.E. Hotchner says he believes that Brian Jones was a victim of the time he lived in. Brian Jones was the classic figure who rises out of the ashes of nothing becomes a great star, rich, famous, and then gets consumed by the very things that he creates. Well, in spite of the new book and the theories it raises, British authorities say there are no plans to reopen the investigation into Brian Jones's death. 